Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to complete a radar plot. So for radar plotting the first thing we need is the plotting sheet which consists of the radar screen and a scale along the side. We're going to determine a couple of things in advance. We're going to be doing a 12 minute plot and our own vessel is going to be doing 10 knots going 0, 0, 0 so due north. This means our own vector is going to be two miles long as measured on our scale because in 12 minutes at 10 knots we would have traveled two miles and then we're going to place it in the center of the screen pointing due north this just represents our own true vector the screen itself we're going to take is roughly six miles it's give or take a little bit just because of the dimensions of the screen though but yeah we're going to call this a six mile plot as well so as soon as we receive our first echo, we can't really determine much. All we know is the range and bearing of the target vessel. We need to continue to monitor to find more information. Then we find the next point. Again, we haven't quite got enough here. We're really working on scanty information at the moment. There's not enough to complete the plot. And then finally, 12 minutes after the initial plot, we get our third plot. So each of these plots is six minutes apart. The full range is 12 minutes, as we previously said. So all we're going to do to immediately find the CPA is we can join a line straight through the middle. And in this particular example, the closest point of approach is zero. If we do nothing, there will be a collision. Now, to find out how long until that collision, we need to measure a couple of distances. This first distance here, we need to find out how far the target vessel has travelled in the 12 minutes we've been plotting it. All we do, transpose that onto the scale, and we see in the last 12 minutes, the target vessel has moved 1.5 miles relative to us. Then, we need to find the distance that the target vessel has got to go from its final position until it reaches us. Again, we're going to transpose this onto the side scale and measure up to find it's about 3.3 miles. To work out how long it's going to take to travel that, we need to do a ratio between these. The ratio of 3.3 to 1.5 will be the same as the time to go to 12. And we simply lay it out like this. All we do is we move the 12 to the other side, simple algebra here, to find the time to the closest point of approach. And running that through the calculator, rounding off to the nearest minute, we get 26 minutes. We can start writing these down the side. So our CPA, as we've said, is zero, and our time to the closest point of approach is 26 minutes. There's a couple more bits of information we need. The next ones are going to be the target vessel's course and speed. This is where vectors start to come into play. What we're going to do is we're going to start to label up parts of the diagram. We're going to call the first plot we received O. The reason for this is it's the original plot. It's the original position the vessel was in when we first saw it. The next point we're going to call A because at the time of this plot, that is the actual position of the vessel. That's the last plot we received. They are actually there. Then we're looking for the other point, W. Now W, to me, doesn't really stand for anything apart from labelling the vectors themselves. And to find W, what we want to do is move our own vector pointing towards the O. And then the bottom of our vector becomes the W. The way to remember this is W to O is the way of your own vessel. W is going to be the point where we're doing all our vectors from, and O being the original position of the target vessel. To find the course and speed of the other vessel, we simply want the vector going from W to A. And we label that WA, which is way of another vessel. And simply the vector joins the two together. Now, as we know from maths, vectors are a component of rain, well, distance and bearing, or speed and bearing. Otherwise, it would just be a measurement, but no, a vector contains more information. So to find out the target's course, we'll transpose that vector to the middle, extend it out to the edge, and we can simply read off the edge of the diagram to determine their course. In this case, it's 303 degrees. To find their speed, all we're going to do is measure the length of that vector and we find it's about 1.1 miles. They've done that 1.1 miles in 12 minutes. Now, of course, to get 12 minutes to an hour, 
you multiply by 5, so times both by 5 to get 5.5 knots. Now we found their course and speed. The next things we want to find are the bearing at the closest point of approach and the aspect. Now in this particular example, where the closest point of approach is zero, there is no bearing. So that one is actually irrelevant. If the closest point of approach was, say, a mile, then we'd want the bearing to where the vessel would be when they were one mile off us. But we'll cover that when we look at a more advanced plot. And the final thing we want is the aspect. Now the aspect's a little bit tricky because of all the workings out we've done on the screen so far, we actually want to change things up a little bit. And all we're going to do is move the target vessel's vector onto their actual position. Now if you look at this, this looks actually exactly like a normal radar screen, where we've got a relative motion plot, where relative to us all the dots are moving, but the vectors are true vectors. We've got our own true vector and the target vessel's true vector. Now the aspect is going to be the bearing we are from the target vessel. So to find that, all we're looking for is the angle between their heading, or their course, and the bearing to us. And we can either measure that directly from this position, or we can transpose their heading to the centre, and extend the lines out, where we've got a nice gauge of degrees around the edge. And all we want is the difference between these. Now you'll note that the bottom line doesn't quite go through 225, where it should. This is just because of the dimensions of my diagram. But we know it's the reciprocal of the bearing we've been detecting the, the target, so it should actually be 225. So to find this out, all we do is 303 minus 225, and we get 78 degrees. Now we know we're on their port side, so we're just going to label that as red 78 degrees. Now, after all that, we've completed the plot. Completing the plot simply means finding the closest point of approach, time to the closest point of approach, target vessel's course and speed, their bearing when they're at the closest point of approach, and their aspect. In other diagrams, it would be more difficult to find these, and we might have a CPA that's not quite zero. Now, to confirm all this, let's just swap it out from a radar plot and look at the overview of the vessel situation. We can see there's two vessels, both moving ahead, but they're on a steady bearing, so risk of collision exists. So, of course, we know from the collision regulations, the action to take is the red vessel is going to come round to starboard, and then both vessels will be clear to continue until they're finally passed and clear. Hopefully you found this introduction to radar plotting useful, however. If you have, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you want to keep up to date with more of my videos, just hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.